What if you go for an audacious, bold uh, pursuit? What if you start the business? What if you write the book? What if you say, I will not be addicted anymore? I will not go after toxic relationships. And you couple that with prayer and fasting, and I'm telling you, you watch the hand of God go to work in your life. Amen. It's not that it just uh, is laser focus on the problem. It is an open heart of devotion for the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you would like weekly content that builds your faith and helps you walk out all that God has for your life, subscribe and be a part of Life Family. January is an important month. How you begin the year sort of sets the pace, at least for me. That's what I've found. And it's significant that January is the first month. If January was just the 13th month of 2021, we wouldn't give it nearly as much uh, emphasis. But the fact that it's one, it's the beginning of 2022, it, it lets us know that we can kind of reset, recalibrate. We can look at our relationships, what went well, what is not going well, what can we do better uh, in business practices as a friend. Uh, all of these things are important for us to look at. The past two years have been incredibly difficult for many of us. We've been in survival mode, your business in survival mode, perhaps your relationships in survival mode. Churches all over the country, uh, all over the world really, are in survival mode. And what happens sometimes in survival mode, you, you, you take on a set of habits and patterns that are are not always good. I love this quote. It says, pay attention to your patterns. The way you learn to survive may not be the way you want to continue to live. So I want to live differently. I don't want to be in survival mode. I want to be thriving. And, and one of those things I want to thrive in is my relationship with the Lord. Obviously, that's important to you. You showed up here today and at all of our campuses it's a priority for you. Um, we are doing a, a series, starting a series today called One Word. And it's not a whole bunch of words. It's just one easy word for you to remember and practice all week. The word for today <laughs> is devotion. Can you say devotion? Devotion. 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 It's not a word that we say a lot, uh, but it's a beautiful word, and it means uh, love, loyalty, and enthusiasm for a person, activity, or cause. Love, loyalty, and enthusiasm. I have lost that somewhere along the way in survival mode. My uh, enthusiasm as a Jesus follower is, has waned somewhat, and I want to get that back. And I get that back through being completely devoted to the Lord. I want to fall more in love with Jesus. And I pray for nothing less than for you to love Jesus more. In John 21 and 15, uh, this is after the resurrection. Jesus gets the band back together, all the disciples. We're getting the band back together. And he gets them all together on the Sea of Galilee, and he does this miraculous thing for them, and then he fixes them breakfast. I would love to eat the breakfast that the Lord Jesus cooks. I'm guessing it's breakfast tacos. <laughs> I bet they're delicious. All the disciples are around a campfire on the shore. Jesus cooked them breakfast, and he's handing it to them, and they won't make eye contact with him. They won't look at him. And why? Because all of them, uh, in the moment he needed them the most, let him down uh, so terribly. You ever let anybody down before? You just, they, they were depending upon you. and uh, Well, that's how they felt. And uh, Jesus hands them, you know, their plate. Uh, and he, he, he says to Simon Peter, do you love me? So he's recalibrating Simon Peter's experience with following him. Now, uh, there are four uh, Greek words 
for our one word, love. There is agape, eros, philia, and storge. And all these mean different things. There's the family love. There's the companionable love. There is a, there is a, a, parent, a parental love. And then there is this agape, which is devotion. That's a devotional love. I mean, it's all in, loyal, love, enthusiasm. So Jesus says to Simon, Do you, are you devoted to me? And Simon answers back, I have a strong uh, a fondness toward you. So Jesus says, okay, let's try that again. Do, are you devoted to me? And Simon Peter says, Lord, you know I have a strong, strong fondness towards you. And the Lord asks a third time. This time, Simon Peter is, is very irritated. Uh, the Lord says, Simon, do you love me? Well, what, is, what is he getting at? The different stages of love toward the Lord. How, how a, a particular love that you had for him that was fresh and enthusiastic and and you were all in, and then, you know, just life happens, and, and sometimes God disappoints you that he didn't act a certain way, that he didn't do a certain thing. And you just, you just, uh, you just kind of get cynical a little bit. Uh, and, and so this is where this question comes to you. Do you love me? So the Lord is asking you today, are you devoted to me? Well, Lord, I have a very strong fondness toward you. I wouldn't even be in church today if I wasn't fond of you. No, I, I appreciate fondness. Are you devoted to me? And uh, I, want to, I want to do better about that. Uh, there's a, a beautiful hymn that I, I learned. It just says, More love to thee, O Christ. More love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make on bended knee. This is my earnest plea. More love, O oh Christ, to thee. More love to thee. More love. I'm the only one that knows this. To thee. And one hand clap. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> More love to thee. I am a third generation pastor. My grandfather was a pastor, pastored a lot of churches. My dad's a great pastor for 50, 50 plus years. And now I'm a pastor. Uh, and I, I just sort of know how to do pastoring. I know how to do it. I know uh, it's my profession, and I, I, I know the things of God. I know how to do the things of God. And uh, I can actually do stuff and not have any heart in it at all. I can read Scripture and close the book, and if you said, what did you read? I would say, I don't have the foggiest idea. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I have prayed prayers for a while, and it had no heart in it. Uh, I, have, uh, I have been faithful to the Lord, but I have not been devotional toward Him. So I want to change that this year. I want my heart all into it, love, loyalty, and enthusiasm. Here's what I know for sure. What I am devoted to, I make time for. I know what you're devoted to because I could say, you know, tell me what you did today and what you did during the weekend, and you just tell me, you know, I, I did this. or, I, or I, I, You know, when you're devoted to a sport, uh, you got the equipment. You 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 watching the the YouTube stuff on it. You're taking and you're going out and practicing. You're you're doing all that. It's time consuming, but you're devoted to it. Relationally, you know I I, I love her. I love him. I can't get enough of them. Uh, and and it, you're devoted to them. Whatever we're devoted to, you make time for. So it is at the beginning of this year that we make time for the Lord, so that our hearts can be fully devoted to Him. 
the greater devotion to Jesus through fasting. I want a greater devotion. And so I'm going to do two principles that create space in my overcrowded heart for the presence of the Lord. Fasting is one of the slowest things you will ever do. I don't know who called it fasting. The pacing of it is that of a turtle. It is so slow because it is abstaining from a natural desire for a spiritual reason. You feed the spirit, not the flesh. Everyone who ever walked with Jesus Christ fasted. Fasted is not something that a monk does up in uh, the hills, uh, monasticism. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's for me and for you as followers of Jesus Christ. It does something to the heart. It reshapes us. It opens space for the Lord to move. Look what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. And when you fast, everybody say these th three words. When you fast. So there's an expectation that Jesus had for the followers of his. When you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, uh, for they try to look miserable and disheveled. By the way, it's not hard to do when you fast. So people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth. That's the only reward they will ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, and no one will notice that you're fasting except your father who knows what you do in private, and your father who sees everything will reward you. Jesus says when you fast, let it be just the two of us can make it if we try. That's old people singing right there. Fasting, fasting. He, he said, let it, let it be between us. Two times in that past, short passage, he says, when you fast. So he has an expectation that we will fast. Fasting, abstaining from a natural earthly desire for a spiritual reason. It's countercultural, doesn't make sense, seems counterintuitive sometimes. It just works. It is clearing out space for the presence of the Lord, fully devoted. There was a man, a father who had a son who was very destructive. He was bipolar. Uh, he had what the Bible calls an evil, destructive spirit. He would be okay for periods of time, then when he would crash, he, he, would, he would try to destroy himself. The dad was absolutely beside himself, of course, uh, a parent is only as happy as their saddest child. And this man was beside himself because of his son. And he brings the boy to Jesus' followers, and he says, can you help me? So he figures, listen, if you've been hanging around Jesus, you should have the same power on you. Can you help my boy? Because I've taken him to places, and there's no help for him. And they said, yes. So they knew how to pray. Jesus had taught them how to pray. So they gathered around this boy and the dad, and they began to pray in the name of Jesus. And they prayed, and they did the best they could. But when they finished, the boy was no better. And so finally the man brought the son to Jesus and said, Lord, I brought my boy to your disciples, and they prayed, but nothing happened. And Jesus said, bring him to me. And so the Lord laid his hands upon the boy, and that spirit came out, that destructive spirit came out of that son, and he was so overjoyed. Uh, privately, the disciples pulled Jesus aside and said, okay, Lord, what, what, what happened? what's up here? <laughs> How come we couldn't do that? And this is Jesus' response. That kind of spirit that kind of destructive spirit comes out only if you use. So they knew how to pray, but they hadn't coupled it with fasting. So this is an unbeatable combination. This is an incredible, transformative 
uh, combination. When you couple prayer and fasting, prayer starts the fire. Fasting is the accelerant where God sees and feels the warmth. When you begin to seriously pray and fast and couple those together, as a couple, as a family, when you begin prayer and fasting, uh, it, it causes the impossible to happen. This spirit came out of this young man. I love what A.W. Tozer said, he, a pastor and an author. He said, God is looking for those with whom he can do the impossible. What a pity that we plan only the things we can do by ourselves. What if you go for an audacious dream this year? What if you go for an audacious, bold uh, pursuit? What if you start the business? What if you write the book? What if you say, I will not be addicted anymore? I will not go after toxic relationships. And you couple that with prayer and fasting, and I'm telling you, you watch the hand of God go to work in your life. It's not that it just uh, is laser focus on the problem. It is an open heart of devotion for the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. More love to thee, O Christ. Now let's talk about the types of fasting. Is it okay if I'm pretty practical here today? All right. Here are the types of fasting in Scripture. Um, there is the, the more traditional of fast that you see that Jesus did and Moses did and others did. It's called the complete fast. And in fact, they abstain from even liquids. But we, we have brought this as a liquids only. So a complete fast is liquids only. So what you do is you just decide, okay, this first week, we're going to do this in three weeks, 21 days. Everybody in the church is going to be fasting 21 days on a different day. We're not asking you to fast 21 days. We just want you to get a day. And uh, a complete fast would be similar to what Jesus did, where you just say, tomorrow, tomorrow, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever you want, I'm going to do a complete fast. I will not eat food, liquids only. So I'll start the day with coffee, drink a lot of water throughout the day. Uh, when it comes to lunch, when it comes to uh, s snacks... <laughs> <laughs> Snack time. Just not going to eat that. I'm going to abstain from that for a spiritual reason. So what is the spiritual reason? Well, for me, it's just like, God, I want more of you in my life. I want more of you. I want to go after your heart. I want you in my, I want to be the man you want me to be. And so that's what I'm fasting for. You can fast for whatever that is, but it needs to have a purpose. You can't just like, get busy at work or at school and, you know, and just like, oh, I missed lunch. Well, I'll just call this a fast. No, no, you just got busy and skipped it. Complete is very intentional. Partial fast, where are certain types of food. So I'm not going to eat uh, uh, meat on these days, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. I'm going to uh, avoid other types of food. It's called a partial fast. Or you may know it in Scripture as a Daniel fast where he said, I'm not going to eat meat. I'm just going to eat vegetables for a period of time. Very popular today is the intermittent fast where you fast certain times of the day and you don't eat at other uh, times of the day. Or you do eat at certain times of the day. So it's intermittent. And then there's an activity fast. If you can't do any of these, uh, try an activity or couple activity with the fast, which is, I'm going to abstain from social media uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever it is. You choose the day, or just one day. And I'm also going to step away from TV and things like that. So why would I do that? Well, he, he told you why. He said, oh, when you do these things, when you abstain for a spiritual reason, it opens your heart uh, for my presence. And that's what I want. So I want everybody here to join me in fasting. And those of you who are in leadership, I would like for you to have multiple days of fasting this week. But let's choose one of these fasts. Let's decide what it's for. And let's see what God does. All right? 
Good. <laughs> Greater devotion to Jesus through prayer. I think we all know we should pray. I think we all know that we, you know, should have a time and a place. But honestly, we just don't pray. Why don't we pray? Oh, for a number of reasons. One would be I prayed. I didn't see any movement on it. So I don't see the use. Another one might be, I just don't have time. In my, my life, I mean, when I get out of bed, I'm rolling, and there's just, it's all the way down, and I, I don't have a spot. And for others of us, it's just, um, you know, I, I just don't know why it would be important. Well, it's going, whatever it's going to be is going to be. God is sovereign. He's going to make it all happen. What, what I need to do prayer for you do prayer because he asks us to pray. It is communicating with him. It is a conversation with him. I love Romans 8, 15. Says this, so you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. So here, right here, uh, the Apostle Paul, writing to the Romans, said, you have a skewed view of who God is in your life. Some of you are serving a God that's angry at you, disappointed in you, uh, that can't wait to, to, uh, to knock you down. He said, where did you get that? Well, that's something that theologians call paternal prayer projection where we project who our father was on God, the fatherhood of God. Martin Luther, the great reformer, would not even pray the Lord's Prayer because it starts with our father. He had an abusive, drunk father, so he wouldn't even pray that prayer. What do you feel like God is when you pray? It could be is why you don't pray. He's not going to do anything. He doesn't want to hear from me. He's angry with me. If you have that view of God, no wonder you don't want to talk to him. But Paul said, instead, you receive this spirit where you call him Abba, Father. That's the tenderest uh, Abba, such a tender Abba, Father, would be what a child would call Daddy. Uh, Daddy. And so he said, there are two images when you pray. Make sure you got the right one. Not the angry God who's disappointed in you, but daddy who has all power, who says, come, talk to me. Tell me what you need. What's happening? Why are, why, how can I help you? Uh, come to me, all of you who are weary, heavy laden. Let me give you rest. What, what do you see when you pray? Who, what image do you have? It is Abba Father, so relational, so conversational. What I am devoted to, I make time for. More devotion, more presence. So the Lord hung out with a bunch of uh, entrepreneurial type uh, disciples. I don't think not one of them was in ministry or was the son of preacher or anything. They were just like, man, these guys had businesses and they were getting it done. And that's who God called, who Jesus called. And so while they had some recognition of what prayer is, they didn't know a lot about it. Like a lot of fellows here today and those of you watching, we just didn't grow up seeing prayer modeled for us by a, a authority figure. It was, uh, just wasn't there. And so we don't know how to pray. You want to turn a fellow's blood to ice water? Call him out and say, would you pray for all of us today? He'll just say, no, <laughs> I can't do it. Because <laughs> we don't know how to work that muscle. We don't have muscle memory when it comes to prayer. The Lord knew his fellows didn't either. So the Lord would show them, here's how I pray. And he would, he would start praying. And in this scripture, Luke 11, 1, it says, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. He always had a certain place. And when he finished praying, they were eavesdropping on him. 
they were eavesdropping on him like the government listening to us. <laughs> Love all of you. I know they're listening right now. One of his disciples said, we, we were eavesdropping on you. We were, we were listening to you. Lord, teach us to pray like you pray. Because they had an image of God that was angry and a perfectionist and just irritated with them. And, and when Jesus prayed, it was out of sonship. It was so relational. God, I love you. I love you. And they're like, you, you can pray like that? So he said, can you teach us to pray? And so this is what Jesus taught them, the Lord's Prayer. Let's read it together, okay? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And do not lead us into temptation. That's a beautiful prayer. I, I've prayed this prayer a lot. Some of you have too, particularly Lutheran, Catholic. You, you pray this prayer. It's such a beautiful prayer. I've sung this prayer a lot of weddings. But this, this, uh, this prayer is a template for how to pray effectively to open your, to transform your heart for devotion uh, to the Lord. Uh, and I decided I'm not going to teach this anymore uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said, I'm just not going to teach this anymore. I always teach this in January. I'm not going to do it anymore. It's too formulaic, and I think people are tired of he hearing it anyway. And, uh, and so I was, uh, I was backstage here, and uh, one of the security team said, you know, one of the greatest things you've, you've ever uh, taught me as I've said under your ministry, I said, what's that? He said, how to pray using the Lord's Prayer. I said, Really? All right. So this is for all of you who haven't heard it. In the Lord's Prayer, there are six. How many? Six steps or six stairways into full devotion. When you are praying a devotional prayer, embedded in the Lord's Prayer is six stairs. And you can pray for 30 minutes. You can pray for an hour. You can pray what the Bible says without ceasing. Let's look at the six. You start with praise. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Praise. So you don't start in devotional prayer with asking the Lord for stuff. Lord, here's a list, and if you could have those uh, to us by noon tomorrow like Amazon, I would appreciate it. He's not Amazon. He's your Father in heaven. And you begin to just, I, I just praise you, Lord. I worship you. Thank you for. So this is, this is how your prayer starts. Thank you for. For what? Oh, well, you could stay there a while on that, couldn't you? Thank you for all the great things in my life. Then he says, uh, the next step is purpose. Your kingdom come, your will be done. All right, so this is purpose. What are the hats you wear? Well, you're a, you're a man, you're a woman, you... Um, you are an employee, an employer. You're a, uh, you're, you could be a single adult. You're married. You, uh, you would have a, a husband or a wife. If you uh, have children, you're a parent. What are all the hats you wear? This is where you say, Lord, I want your will to be done in my life as a husband. Lord, how can I be a better husband to Denise? And that's where you pray these prayers. How can I be a better father? to Lily Pearl and Garland. How, how can I be a better pastor to my people? And you just start praying, what are your roles? And you say, God, your will be done. I'm just making this up as I go, but I, I, would just, I need you, Lord. I need you. That's beautiful. And then petition. This is the third point where you just ask the Lord for things you need. I need the house to sell. I need them to settle this lawsuit. I need for this to go away. I need this to happen. I need, I need my son to, to get out of this addiction. You know, this is where you say, Lord, uh, give us this day our daily bread. Help me with this. That's the third. Fourth, pardon. 
This is the toughest one. Forgive us our debts. We know we have a lot of those. And we're counting on him looking the other way, <laughs> forgiving us. But then there's that as we part that irritates me <laughs> because it is forgive me in the same regard as I forgive people who have offended me. Oh, man, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. So some years ago, I was praying this, and I just felt like, start naming these people. And that was the hardest thing for me because I couldn't get it out of my <laughs> first few times. I'm like, and Lord, I forgive. Ugh. I couldn't say it. But I got better at it. And now I can say, and Lord, forgive them as you have forgiven me. But there's something transformative about that pardon that will free you. Whew, it's so good. Protection. And do not lead us into temptation. So all of us were born bent. We have a bent. And we can be going along in a straight path. And then just all of a sudden we just start <laughs> veering off like, why, why am I hanging around people who are toxic? Why do I hang around people who, who are not going the way I need? Why do I keep doing this? Why do I, it's that's, Lord, don't let me be led into temptation by my own, uh, you know, interest. Keep me, protect me, Lord. Pray this for your children as well. And then you end your prayer with proclamation. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Lord, however this ends up, you're going to get praise for it. You're going to get glory for it. So there are six steps in the Lord's prayer. If you're going to pray an hour, how, how, many, how much time would you give each step? I didn't know math was required today. <laughs> Six steps. You're going to pray an hour. Ten minutes. Well, you can do that. But if you're going to play 30 minutes, you know, five, five minutes. But you can see how you could just begin this thing of prayer that is just like, okay. Lord, teach us to pray like you pray. Because when you pray, it's special. Man, when I pray, it just looks like it's just flat, just going out and flat. <sighs> Teach me to pray. Because uh, when I pray, I feel so close to you. We, what I am devoted to, I make time for. Certain place. What is your place of prayer? Well, sometimes it could be the car. You're in the car. You're, you know, you have a 15, 20-minute commute. Perfect place to do it. Uh, sometimes there's a little closet. Sometimes there's a place in the living room. Or if you live in an apartment, maybe there's a spot off to the side. Uh, you want to have music. You want to make sure music's playing. Uh, music, it just helps prayer. It, and the music you choose for your streaming uh, should not include words, just the music. And it just kind of takes you on a journey. It just, just helps you. Um, it's It's beautiful. Just when you couple prayer and fasting, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. God's about to do something in your life. Well, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. I just got back here to my green room, and I'm, I, I think I was preaching to myself a lot. Lord, I, uh, I don't want to continue in my love for the Lord like it's been. I think my love for the Lord has gotten kind of stale and, uh, and routine and rote and I, I just uh, I need more heart I need to give my heart to the Lord I need to be more devoted to him what I'm devoted to I make time for so in prayer and fasting these are the two things I'm going after this week and I sure hope you'll join me how can I pray for you how can I fast with you concerning the things that God has placed upon your heart. Please let me know. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for loving us, for even so many of you give uh, to this ministry even though you don't attend here. It's just unbelievable. And I appreciate that. The Lord bless you. Hey, thank you for being a part of service today. 
We hope that God's word met you right where you are. We hope you took something that's gonna help you move forward in God's best for your life. We wanna hear from you. There's a link right below this video you can click on. Send us a note, let us know what's going on in your world, where you're watching from, maybe even how we can be praying for you. We love believing God with you for God's best in your life. You can do that by clicking that link, sending us a short note. Hey, maybe also you've made a decision to follow Jesus recently. That excites us, we celebrate with you. We wanna hear from you. We wanna know what God is doing in your life. You can text the word follow to 22999. We'll respond back with a link that you can click on. Go to our website. We have some great next steps for you, how to move forward in that decision that you're, you've made to follow Jesus, whether it's water baptism, whether it's getting in a life group, or maybe even planning in God's house right here with us in Life Track. We know whatever that next step is, God has great plans for your life, and we wanna be a part of seeing all of God's best fulfilled in your heart and in your life. We hope you're doing awesome. We can't wait to see you next time. If you don't have a home church, we would love to invite you to be part of Life Family. Remember, you belong here. Join us again next Sunday or any time throughout the week. Hit that bell so you never miss when we post a new video. Hope to see you again soon.